One of the most prestigious objects in uh, Maumu's collection is an 18th century coverlet. It's about 2 meters high and 1 meter 50 wide and it's totally made of lace. These types of objects were most, about the most prestigious and the most expensive lace object you could buy in the 18th century. So the ones that have still have a provenance are usually related to royalty because you had to be extremely wealthy to uh, own one of these. Um, coverlets like these were made in uh, were made in Brussels, Brabant, Ghent, not in Antwerp, but Antwerp would have dealt in pieces like that, so the, some of the trade would go to Antwerp. And here you can really say that they made grisaille with very fine flax threads because the shading becomes very important, the design is almost three-dimensional and you had to be extremely skilled to be able to make something like that. The designs on a coverlet like this could have been, uh, could have been ordered for a wedding and one element that might point to this is that they have these uh, palm trees, which are a symbol of Christ, but they are also a symbol of fertility. In the 19th century, there's a lot of changes in, uh, in lace making and in the use of lace. The French Revolution brings a huge cutback because lace becomes much less fashionable but it slowly comes back again, but the styles are very different. And in the early 19th century, uh, people like the list to be very airy, very, uh, so not too much design. The design is usually only at the very edge of something. And that tendency slowly changes throughout the 19th century to go back to a fuller, a fuller aesthetic uh, of the uh, Napoleon III era. To follow these changes, uh, new types of lace evolved, and the most important novelty is the fact that plain backgrounds are made separate, first by hand, like in this one, this entire background has been made with bobbins, in strips of about two, two and a half centimeters wide that have been connected. So this is still a very labor intensive piece. But designs have then have been made separate. Like you can see here, these little things are designs made separate to be applied onto a, a pre-made net. This net from about uh, 1807 can also be made by machine. And the first machines were developed by Heathcote in uh, England. And we know that uh, even before the fall of Napoleon in 1815, some of that machine-made net was already imported into Belgium. Also very popular in the, in the 19th century is uh, black silk lace. Black silk lace already existed long before the 19th century, but most of the pieces we still have are second half of the 19th century or early 20th century. This is one of our more beautiful pieces of uh, Chantilly type black, uh, black lace made in black silk. This piece could have been made not in Chantilly, which had, was a production center in the 18th century, but this piece could have been made either in Bayeux in Normandy or in Gerardsbergen, Gramont in, uh, in Belgium. These types of lace suffered major, uh, suffered major problems because by this is mid 19th century and by the mid 19th century, so this is a parasol cover. This is also a parasol cover, but still on its parasol. 
and when you look at it closely, you can see it's machine made. So of course, much cheaper because you could produce, once you had developed a design and developed a jacquard, uh, you could produce hundreds of these. And when you put them side by side, you can hardly see the difference. So only a specialist would see the difference. So many people stopped wearing real lace. And in the 1920s, society had changed so much that most people didn't really want handmade lace anymore. The best markets for Belgium during that time were a little bit to Southern Europe and a lot to the United States and South America. South America remained a good market. In a more traditional sense, uh, the city, small city of Turnhout near, not far from Antwerp, was producing these types of things. So this is, uh, this is a band that would have been used on uh, 1920s and 1930s underwear. So this, this would be for a woman's uh, undershirt with this design right here. Other renewals were to make, uh, to make lace making more expedient by using threads that were less fine, like this uh, 1920s collar from Bruges. When you look at the color, it's not something that a young woman would have worn in the 20s. This is for older ladies who are still more traditional. Traditional lace making basically ends around the Second World War, the beginning of the Second World War, and the two only centers who were still producing professionally at that time were Bruges and Turnhout. And for the rest, by that time, lace has died out and you would have to wait till the revival by people who wanted to make lace as a hobby in the 1970s and that starts a whole new story.